So what I've got here is a brief for a job and we're about to get ready and I'm going to show you everything I do in the studio to get ready. We're just doing it by ourselves, it's the weekend now so we've got plenty of time but I just want to go through all of the equipment we use, the data set up, the transfers, the workflow, all of that sort of stuff, how we get the equipment ready, how we work out what we're going to need. I can't show you what's in this brief because obviously it's confidential but you'll get all the information you need. So the first and most important thing of any shoot is the data. The data is exactly what we must keep safe. If we break a Canva, we have a replacement, but if we lose the files, we're really in a mess. So we're gonna start off with a capture station, and this is what the role of a Digitech would do normally, but because it's just me here at the moment, I'm going to show you what that would be. Now my capture table is this here, it's just a rock and roller cart. We've got an M1 Mac Mini on here and a BenQ display. Now, what is important and maybe somewhat interesting is we don't bother calibrating this very often because we've got LED lights overhead, we've got window light from over here, and then we'll have the warm halogen bulbs of the flashlights all going through the room. There's glare on it, there's no perfect condition. So calibrating it is pretty pointless. As long as it's close enough, it's just like a general 4K screen, it'll get the job done. Right, I'm just gonna move this into a better position. There we go. So every shoot we go on, whether it's here or on location, this little Peli case, it's not a Peli case, it's an Ant Mag case comes with me, and this is where we keep our data stuff. So if I open this up here, and Rob, if you have a quick look inside, you'll see we've got two SSD drives and one spinning disk drive. The spinning disk drive today won't be used because we're shooting at my studio, but if we were shooting on location, this would stay in the Digitex hotel room and these would stay in mine. But these are the drives that we back up to and transfer data from. So when we're shooting, we'll tether straight into the Mac Pro direct, not through a hub. The files will land on the hard drive of the Mac Pro. One of them, we use Chronosync, will back up to this drive, which is drive two, and the other one, which we'll do manually, will back up to drive one. That way, if someone sets up the auto backup incorrectly, we've still got the manual one. If they do the manual one incorrectly, we've still got the auto one. So hopefully between those, we've got a bit of a fail safe. These then, one of them gets taken into the main office, gets docked in our SSD dock and goes through our entire ingestion process, which is onto the various archival drives and working drives. And that's where the work happens. And both this machine and that machine are both backed up to Backblaze. So everything goes onto the cloud. I've got two separate accounts, two separate usernames. And you know, if one of them gets hacked or goes down for whatever reason, we've still got the other. Now, the drives themselves, they're going through a Cal Digi USB-C dock, and that just allows us to have more ports than these smaller laptops allow. On a big shoot, we wouldn't use a laptop this small. This has only got like 16 gig of RAM. It's not particularly fast and powerful. We'd use like a fully specced out Pro machine. Let's wheel this a little way out. So the first thing we're going to do here is open up Capture One. Capture One is the software of choice. It's what every Digitech uses, unless you're shooting Hasselblad. Um, Capture One's just industry standard. It's the best tethering software and it's the best raw processing software. Um, and it has loads of other great things with it as well, sort of, you'll see as we go along, but for remote shooting, firing the camera, controlling the camera, and the way it works is just very good. So whilst Capture One is booting up, we'll get the camera in. Generally speaking, most shoots require one lens and one lens only. It's very rare that we need multiple lenses on a shoot because we tend to be shooting one specific style and design. So we've got the Cambo Actus MV bellows body, the Mamiya lens bellows, a Secor 90 millimeter, and the 100 megapixel Fuji on the back here, which is being powered by one of those big Sony batteries, um, which should last us most of the day. And then we've got a couple of tether cables here. So this is the Area 51, and this is the extension lead. We don't use the extension lead unless we absolutely have to, because it, it really slows down tether speeds. It, it's a big, big difference between the two. Now this is a pretty long cable anyway. I think it's about five meters. I think it goes up to like 10 or 15 with the entire shebang. But we'll get this and we'll plug it direct into my computer. There we go. We'll start a, we'll allow that. A new session. We'll call this, I'd normally call it the shoot's name, so client and then date, we'll go next to it onto our desktop. And that's all set to go. Hopefully when I turn this camera on, if Area 51 have been good to me and all the stars align, there we go, we have tether. We'll take a frame, check it works, 
there we go, nice blank frame because we're at F, F11. Bit of window light in the corner. So that's the initial setup for this part, but there's much more to it. So once we've got this running, we now need to get Capture Pilot running. So because I'll have a Digitech sat here all day, I need to be separate and not breathing down their neck, which is why we have this little stand. Let's see if we can get it out, there we go. And this setup here is me. So we'll have a V-mount battery on here. Got my iPad here. This will be where I can see Capture One using Capture Pilot. I can fire the camera, rate stuff, view stuff, all that good thing. We've got a wireless setup here. So if we need to have this camera in a place I can't see it, I can see the live view on a wireless through HDMI and my drinks holders. So I like to drink a lot during a shoot. Okay, so once we've got this setup, this is the camera setup. We may have additional iPads, often one down there, or additional monitors running wirelessly so the client can see. So what we want to do is keep this small shooting area like just down to the minimum amount of people. Over there will be the stylist. Uh, for this shoot, we'll have the models back there. Clients will be on the sofa and a few chairs around the coffee table, editors in the office, and we'll be working in this area. So we try and give everyone a monitor so they can see what's going on. We either use wireless or we use uh, Capture Pilot. Most of my assistants have Capture Pilot on their phones so they can just get that going to make it all run. The other thing we need on every shoot is flash. Flash is very important. So we get the triggers ready. I've got pocket wizards. They are the superior trigger device. Um, I can't remember what these ones are called, but they work really well. So we have one of these on the flash pack, one of them on the camera head. Camera head? What are they called, Rob? Hot shoe. Hot shoe, isn't it? It's hot. It's a hot shoe. It's very hot. So we'll plug these into here. So we'll put our sink port in. Get these all nicely set up. And then I just use a bongo tie to get this onto here. Badly. There we go. So we'll have that all set up there. Then over on the tether trolley for the, uh, for the Digitech, this iPad runs the Broncolor software. So they can control from here the flash power and the camera settings. They can't control focus on this, but if we had an autofocus lens, they can also do that. But they can control all of that from here. And the Digitech who sits here all day, um, in this case, she will be doing all the backups, data management, annotations. So notes for the retoucher and making sure we've got one of these drives ready to go throughout the day to shuttle to the office for retouching and backing up. And of course, at the end of the day, both of these tether drives come home with me and they go onto my home offsite backup as well. So we've got the offsite backup and we've got the office backup. What else do we do, Rob? So this is the basic setup to get the camera up and running. Now we do this because we don't shoot all the time. We do this early enough that if there's a problem, we can order the spare part that's broken. We normally have a backup, but then obviously if we're using the backup, we no longer have a backup of the backup. So for example, if we go to fire these flashes and all of a sudden half the pocket wizards don't work, we'll order loads of new pocket wizards so they arrive in time for the shoot. Not always possible, sometimes things move too fast, but ideally that's what we do. Now this here is what I will be doing before any of the shoot takes place. So I've done this now, and then tomorrow we have what's called a pre-light day. So pre-light days are when you have a really stacked schedule or a very time sensitive shoot where it has to be conducted in a certain day. Because often lighting the set can take up until lunchtime. And if they don't have that time available on the day for whatever reason, clients coming in, model availability, stylist availability, or just deadlines because they've messed something up in the planning towards it. You know, we want to get that pre-light day in so we're not wasting all that money and time. On a pre-light day, it will just be me, my assistant, and sometimes an art department or a set design to help get that sort of stuff ready. Usually my agent as well or producer. But on the big shoot day, for example, for this shoot, we'll have myself, my two assistants, my retoucher, my digitech, my agent, my producer. Then we'll have the client, the creative director, the art director, a few models, 
wardrobe and all of that sort of thing all ready for it to sort of come in. So tomorrow we'll do the pre-light, we'll get the lighting set up, we'll get it all as close as we can, build everything up. And the key thing is, if you've got lights like this, left in ridiculous boomed positions, what you need to do is measure exactly where this is and then put it back. So what you don't want is like a camera falling from a top-down setup or a light crashing down overnight because gravity has taken its toll on it. So it's really important to get these things sorted. The workflow is pretty simple though. You know, once we finish the shoot, everything gets backed up, but throughout the day, the finals go through to the retoucher. The client will be signing off as, as we go, which is really key. These just go in there, get retouched for draft retouching, and then the final retouch will happen afterwards. But yeah, it's a pretty simple setup. It happens the same on every single shoot, but it's just really important to have these key markers that you do so that you know your shoot will be flawless. You know, if this laptop doesn't work, where's our backup laptop? If the monitor dies, where's the backup monitor? Having all of this stuff in place ready to go, rather than just turning up and hoping that when you turn your camera on, it still works. If you've got any questions about workflow, pop them down below and I'll answer them in the next video. See you soon, bye-bye.